Aloha everyone, how are you? Um, I want to, um, I want to give a testimony. Um, some people have asked me, you know, why, you know, they hear certain people call me princess, especially um, leaders that are high up in the, in the, in the ranking, in the faith. Um, um, they refer to me as princess because some of them um, are close to me and have, you know, been with me during my, my walk. Um, one thing that I, um, I am happy about is the fact that um, I, 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 I'm very, you know, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just, I'm happy that people have seen and watched me over the years to, to go from one level in the Lord and remaining steadfast and faithful in that walk to allow him to grow me, you know, and, um, and mature me and teach me and, and, you know, me just stay in that, in that meek space where I can be malleable, you know, like he can mold me into, you know, whatever pot he wants. He's the, you know, he's the potter and I was the clay, you know, the clay, you know, and the history behind the princess of him calling me princess is um, in October of 2015, I believe it was um, what some would call like All Saints Day. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, if I'm connecting it with that, you know, you know, coin term or anything like that. I just remember that that was like kind of in the news or something. I remember hearing that that term in the news, nothing to do with my vision or what happened to me, but I remember it was something going on with that. But I remember, um, and this video, you know, when it happened, you know, I, I posted a video about it. I was nowhere near, you know, you know, operating you know, the way things are now. <laughs> but I remember I was, um, I fell asleep. I don't know how long I was asleep. I can't quite remember, but I do know um, I found myself standing in what looked like a very large corridor. It looked very regal, the corridor that I was in. Something that would be like in a mansion, you know, um, but not like a, a modern mansion, like kind of like one of those castle type of mansion type of, you know, theme or whatever. Anywho, I saw a picture frame, a gold picture frame with beautiful etchings on it or whatever. And I remember I was looking at it and I began to see that the picture was like real, like it wasn't like a flat static image. It was like real, like you're looking at me through this monitor and I'm talking and I'm moving. That's kind of like what I saw. Um, in the, in the dream. So I end up climbing into the picture. I just was moved in my spirit to follow that unction to come into the picture. And when I climbed into the picture, I, uh, I saw that I was inside of like wheat. It was like wheat field. And I could see Yeshua in the distance. It looked like he was in a break between you know, like wheat, and then it was like a little break, I guess a little, you can walk or something like that, and then the wheat began, continued beyond, I guess, or whatever. And I'm running through the wheat field, and I'm actually watching myself, like I'm still outside the picture, but I'm watching myself run. And then all of a sudden, I'm not out the picture, my, my, um, my consciousness is in the Asia that's in the picture or whatever. And I get up to him and I stop and he's, he's happy to see me. He's talking to me. He refers to me as princess. And I knew he was talking to me. And um, I remember it being so gold. Like, it was so gold. It was like you wanted to, like, touch. It was almost, like, unbelievable. It's like a beautiful, like, magical type of, you know. So I remember he took my arm and it was this this arm and we locked arms together and we began to walk through the wheat field and he's like 
princess and then he's talking 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 he's saying you know princess such and such and such and such and then um he's like he's like princess are you are you listening to me are you listening and i and i remember i was like yes daddy i just i, I want to like touch this stuff you know like I don't, you know i didn't use that language or anything like that i'm just like paraphrasing now but i remember like as i was you know expressing my curiosity as to this is amazing you know i remember he like looked at me like he was like he was like looking like gesturing with his face and gentle and loving oh my gosh and it was when i say peace i mean it was like peace like it was like the wind was ministering peace and it wasn't up i would say a breeze rather the breeze was ministering it wasn't even like a breeze it was so gentle it was just like and you would just see gently the the tops of the wheat like go like that um and i remember going like this and i look and he said like 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 yes that's what i want you to do and i remember i i touched and it was real i remember like like this is not like and yes i just ran through it and everything like that but it was like i didn't comprehend you know wow this is like i can feel it in my hands like i can feel the top and i was like i'm really here like this is not a, a dream this is like i'm here so and I remember he kept talking and, oh my goodness, I could not remember even to this day what he said other than him calling me princess. <laughs> and um, I remember that it was some type of, I don't, I'm not going to say scroll, but because it wasn't like long, it was like, like one of these like short, but anyway, it kind of like, and it kind of went to my heart. But I don't know, like even to this day, like, but I know that when it happened, I remember the Lord, like, you're my apostle. Like, I remember that vividly, but I don't know what he said. And then Yeshua was telling me what it meant when we are brought into a wheat field and we were touching the heads of the wheat. This is nations. And when he explained that to me, I was nowhere near where I am now. I mean, so um, I'm just going to encourage all of you, you know, those of you that are listening to Ministers of Righteousness, determine when you can and can't speak on your testimony. I would advise you to just spend some time with the Lord. <clears throat> I'm not at all suggesting that you override your 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 teacher or your leader whoever the lord has led you to um but what i am saying is this there's there's a there's a time a season and a way to do everything and you can have a leader and still have a testimony you know but just make sure that your heart is right and that is in proper order and it's, it's decent and in proper proper order and um don't think that deliverance only looks one way, meaning that, you know, someone else will say, okay, you're delivered, now you can talk about this. Um, sometimes you're in your deliverance by being involved in, or in that situation where you can walk it out. You know, sometimes people get delivered by helping others. You know, deliverance doesn't look one way. We all are unique and God knows how to speak to us. He knows how to speak to that uniqueness um, in a way that ministers to us so that we receive what he's given us to minister to others. So I hope that blesses someone. The next instance where the Lord is calling me princess is um, it was July 7th, um, 2019. Um, some weird thing happened with my blood. Um, it, I didn't have any oxygen in my blood. Um, they were telling me that I was bleeding from somewhere, uh, hemorrhaging, whatever, but there was no blood anywhere. There was no leak of blood. There was no 
you know, bleeding of an organ internally. It was no, it was nothing to explain why my blood count had dropped and why, you know, my hemoglobin was just like, it was, it was to the point I was about to die. You know, if I had not come in, you know, and they had to give me, I think, four or five blood transfusions to keep me alive. And this was before, you know, the Wu-Tang Clan came. <laughs> uh, so, the, you know, I didn't have to worry about, you know, contaminated blood, you know, from, you know, the jab or the punch. Um, so we went through that and I, I look, it looks like I did okay with that, you know, for a little bit of time until like recently, but that's neither here nor there. Um, when I was in the ER, I slipped unconscious. Yeah, I slipped unconscious. Um, and I found myself waking up in a beautiful garden. Um, I remember how it smelled. It smelled like jasmine. It was just every beautiful fragrance was there. And I, I knew Yeshua was there. I knew Abba was there. I knew, you know, Jesus was there because the first dream and in other areas in my life where I knew Yeshua was there with me, I could smell him. I know what he smells like. <laughs> he smells like Israel. <laughs> And I know those of you that haven't been to Israel, you will not know what I'm talking about. But like when you get off at the airport, like that's what he smells like. Like he smells like Israel. It's like every frankincense, myrrh, spice. It's just like every beautiful thing all balled up in once. And you can smell him. Like in, in this, like in Spikenar, oh my goodness. It's like you can smell him. And so I could smell him before I turned my head to see these two trees. And I saw Yeshua, he was bent over in front of the two trees. And I remember his back was so huge, huge, huge. I think men that are, you know, of, of big stature and their backs, it's like one of the things that I just think is so gorgeous on the male physique. And I remember, and, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that in in a uh, uh, inappropriate light. I'm just saying what I think is beautiful on the physique of a of a man. And I remember when I turned to look, his back was like it was like a massive, like, and he was doing something with the dirt, the ground that the trees were rooted in. His fingers was in it. And um, I remember the soil. I can even smell the soil smelled like with everything. All of my senses were just ignited. And I remember he turned and he said, Oh, princess, you're up. I'm dying in the natural. My blood, everything, everything was just, everything all had to break. I can actually hear my daughter talking as I'm slipping some, you know, into paradise. So I know that that some people that go, you know, to one place, I know from my experience that they can go to another place. And I know some people when they get, they have that's what they see this like, um, Abba snatched me and pulled me into another place. I was in a, I was in his paradise. Um, the last time I heard of something like this, um, is when I kind of like went to research what happened to me afterwards. And from what I understand now is that where I went is where Mary went. They, they, we didn't go to the process that other people had to go through whatever like that. Like there's a place for a certain type of entity that they get snatched from all of that judgment or that they're already you know there's something and daddy brings them to paradise and um i saw this also when the when the man um uh that was next to yeshua he he had did all those bad things and and yeshua forgave him on the cross he got judged right then and he said you know surely today i will see you in paradise like he didn't have to go through the, the hell and process and go through the different stages that some people have to go through. He got judged. So there's some people you need to understand. This is like one of the things that the Lord talks to me about 
is there is um, Yeshua can judge you at your last moment and you you know some of you you have an address already and it, you know but we'll talk about that later. but I was pulled into when I was dying I didn't go up down I didn't go this that and the other I don't know which way I went but I know I did not go down it's almost seemed like I got pulled into a different realm and I was just in a beautiful paradise and he turned around he said princess you're up and he began to talk to me. And I remember when he had his hands in the the ground, I could see like he, he was doing some, like the earth itself, he was giving it like power. Like it was amazing. And again, I did the same thing with the other, other dream. I didn't listen. And he spoke to my spirit and whatever he gave me was like a secret. And so this is like, my history behind princess it's not something that i said hey i'm just gonna call myself that it's not something that i um i have to irritate people uh, who is she a princess I know that. it's nothing to do with that it's, it's pure and innocent where it's coming from it's what i heard yeshua call me it's what my abba calls me and he's told other people in the spirit to do so and they have and um only God can speak to people like that. So, again, I'm just saying, just remember who you are and remember what the Lord calls you. Because if you don't know who you are and you don't know what the Lord calls you, somebody else will try to give you an identity that they fathom out of their own heart. And everybody's heart does not mean you well. Some people have not had an experience with Yeshua like I have and maybe like some of you have. Some of them have a lot of their experiences with Satan and that's why they do the things that they do. That's why it's easier for them to jump on a wicked report, a wicked Babylon, because that's the condition of their heart. Um, this message is really about love. Um, and how much we love the Lord and how we should be loving one another. I love my name. You know, my godmother named me Asia. And in that, the way that it's spelled in Hebrew, the Lord's name, Yah, Yahshua. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah. And the Holy Rock HaKadosh, he is our dearest love. So when you hear things like when the Lord says, those that are called by my name, a lot of us don't even realize that that name that we're given in the spirit say, when the Lord said, what are you gonna name this baby? Your surname is what comes down from generation to generation in the natural. But that that name that comes and speaks to the heart, spirit name, Asia. And my name means uh, that kingdom come, that will be done. It's, the, it's like four, it's like, it's the fourth like realm. It's like when heaven and then underneath you have earth and then Asia is in the middle and it's the realm of manifestation. It's when it comes together and it's like that birthing moment. You know, and it's so amazing because so much of my life has been there. And then it, it pairs up with, you know, why so many dragons come at me? Because I'm constantly in the space of bringing whatever we're praying about in the spirit at that, that birthing moment. And in the book of Revelations, it's, it is a dragon that's like right there at the woman's feet. So it can devour the baby as soon as it comes out. And um, we'll talk about that in another video. But this is why it's so important that we just remember who we are um, and the authority that we have and why we need to love one another and be there for one another. Um, I just wanted to share my testimony with the nickname the Lord gave me um, and why it's so dear to me. And so that everyone is comforted in knowing that it's not something that a man could give me or take away from me because Yeshua himself refers to me as this. So it's something that um, it means the world to me. 
Um, so I hope, you know, those of you that was thinking, you know, is that her name or is that what her name? It is my, my name because it's what I am to the Lord. And he calls me that. So, um, yeah. So, I love you all. I'll be on again. I have to give a not too great word, but I need to prepare you all because there is a very, very, very serious thing that's happening in the earth right now. So, I'll be on in a minute, but I wanted you to know that um, I love you with the love of Christ. And, um, shalom.